Hi everyone, this is Diane. I'm starting a series of videos that uh, are all about my favorite junk journal supplies. And I would like to just take you through, I make all different types of journals. And so I use a ton of different kinds of supplies for different types of journals. So, I mean, I could really go into a lot of detail about the things I use in journals. So I'm gonna have to try to uh, you know, not make it too confusing. But the first video is you have to always start with the basics. <coughs> so we're going to talk about basic journal supplies. Starting with adhesives, my favorite adhesives. Now this used to be one of my favorite adhesives and it is by Scotch Tacky Glue, permanent tacky glue. And I still like it. I'm going to start using it again just so I can use this bottle up and I might have another spare bottle of it because I have um, a small supply of extras. When I use up this bottle of glue, I will have another one on hand. Or when I, when I start using the last bottle, I purchase another one so I always have a spare. Uh, so that's this is water-based and it can cause... Uh, wrinkling in your paper if you're gluing paper to paper so don't use too much of it but it does work very very well it's it is a permanent adhesive so it does glue things very well and I use Fabri-Tac by Beacon also 3-in-1 which is also by Beacon and I don't know what the difference is this is has got a leak and it's still sealed Um, so, 3-in-1 and Fabri-Tac are, there must be a difference in them, but I don't know what it is. I've used them both and for the same purposes, and they both work very, very well. What I don't like about Fabri-Tac is a nozzle. You have to cut the nozzle, cut the tip in order to open it, and it, it is a big nozzle and so it's a little hard to control. So I learned this from other people on YouTube and that is to get the Sugar Bell frosting bottle and I got mine on Amazon. I can link that below and it comes with the tip of course and it's a precision tip so it works a lot better at getting out less of the glue but there's a hole in it so you have to seal the hole. So you have to use a rust proof pin and I put mine on a knitting needle cap which you can get also on Amazon or in your Hobby Lobby store in, in the yarn section or you know wherever you buy knitting yarns you could probably find some of those. So I found I, I think I ordered the T pins on Amazon, but I also got a box of yeah. Those are the T pins. Some of them are too big to fit in, but um, you can go to Etsy and look for uh, blue bottle stoppers, and you get you can find people that make pretty ones with beads dangling off them, and they're they're really nice and easy to keep track of because of all the beads. Um, but I just have a collection of the knitting needle caps. And I went to Hobby Lobby and found, I think this is them, I found um, rust proof pins. You have to look at the back of the package and they're a little short but they work. And when you put them through the top of a knitting needle cap it just, it works great. So that's how I use the Fabri-Tac. My Fabri-Tac and my Sugar Bell bottle and, and its accessories for using the Fabri-Tac glue. Another glue that I like a lot and it took me a long time to start using it because it is expensive is Art Glitter Glue. There is has nothing to do with glitter. I think it's from the Art Glitter Company and this is their glue. And it's, this bottle is a mess. <laughs> because I use it a lot. And this one does come with a precision tip, which again, 
I no, I think I had to buy a precision tip to go with it because it comes like that. But I bought the precision tip with a very small hole, and this is my pin. It's just got it sticks out just a tiny bit from this knitting needle cap because it's small. It's a short pin, but it works. So I just do the same thing with that, with the pin and the knitting needle cap. And so let me tell you how I use these differently. Let me show you what it is. I use this for fabric and lace and gluing a heavier piece like a chipboard or cardstock piece, um, even embellishments like 3D embellishments or flowers or something, I will use this. This I use mainly when I'm doing a thinner paper. Oh, by the way, this one is acetone based and so there's no water in it so it doesn't cause the crinkling in the paper. This I use for small pieces for, let me show you, when I glued this little fussy cut piece to this tag I, I use the precision tip on this. It's much finer than the other one and the glue comes out in a very small stream so you can glue small pieces with it and I use use it for gluing on paper embellishments and things like that. I, I think you can use it for lace. Uh, I think it works to hold that but I usually use this because it's a, a little bit cheaper than this one. And then the other one I use uh, is Glossy Accents or something similar to that. This one is by Ranger. Uh, Stampin' Up! has a brand, has a clear. And it's not really um, produced as, a, as, a, as an adhesive. It's for dimensional, it's a clear dimensional medium. It dries to a clear gloss finish so you can, if you have a an embellishment on your page you can cover it with this and it does have a small tip you can cover it with this and let it dry and it dries glossy so you have just put a glossy finish on whatever your piece is but I like this for gluing on uh, embellishments like metal pieces and I do the flowers sometimes with this but mostly I do use it for metal pieces, buttons, and book corners. When I put metal corners on my books, I just put a couple drops of this on it just to make sure the corner is going to stay on that cover. And then I use glue stick and the one I use is Elmer's Extra Strength Craft Bond. I've never tried the Uhu glue that a lot of people use. That one is also expensive. Um, I don't have problems with this. I use this for my glue books and uh, thin paper, gluing thin paper together. I like the big one and I like the small one for different um, purposes. And I use the red tape and there's an example of it in its package. The different hobby shops, craft shops have their own brand of it, but they're all very, I found them all to be the same and they are very a uh, strong adhesive. I buy the quarter inch ones. They are what they are what works the best for me. I use this mainly for adhering um, my putting my covers together and I just did a video recently talking about this. Um, so if you just look back a little bit in my in my videos you'll see um, I was creating a spine making my journal cover for Raggedy Ann journal and I use this for that. I also have always liked my ATG tape glider and I haven't been using it because I haven't been able to find the tape in the stores and when I found it on Amazon it was extremely expensive. I haven't looked lately on Amazon but one of my um, viewers sent me a happy mail she was giving up her supplies and she gave me her tape gun with the tape loaded in it so I can use that but I do like to use this for just adhering like something square and big I can go around the corners with that 
and it, it, this is a very sturdy double-sided tape. So that's a lot of different adhesives that I use for different purposes. But I keep them all. I use them all. Besides adhesives, other basics are the bases for your journal. So I always keep chipboard on hand and I talked about these two items in my um, Raggedy Ann journal cover video also because this is what I use to make my spines. I can also use this to cut it to the right size to make a journal cover. And so I keep um, a supply of this on hand and I get this from Amazon. I will link that below. And also to create the spine I use Tyvek. I just lay this in between I have my cover, my spine, and my cover, and this spans all of them and puts them together, and it's very sturdy, and Tyvek is like a plastic paper. I don't think it's got any paper in it. It's just a plastic, but it works like a paper. So it comes in, a, in the form of an envelope. You know, the post office has envelopes. With this, you cannot just take take them from the post office and use them because it's illegal to just take uh, federal supplies and use them for your own purposes unless you're actually mailing something in it. But you may get something in the mail in an envelope like this, which is what this was. One of my viewers got her addresses on the other side, and she sent it to me uh, with her other supplies that she's giving up. So I can cut this up and use it, but I also have recently found on Amazon that you can just get the sheets. And it's close to 8.5 by 11. I think it's a little bit different, but it's close to that. So I can just cut the size piece that I need. So that is just like a base for my journals. I use all kinds of things for covers, and I want to cover that in a different video. I use old book covers, new book covers. Um, envelopes, folders, I like file folders, cardstock, fabrics. So we'll talk about that in a different video. But these are basics that I use in almost every journal. Other basics that I use are the basic tools. I will talk have another video where I talk about my favorite tools that are beyond the basics. But let's talk about the basics today. When we're working with paper, of course, we need something to cut the paper with. This one has something stuck on it. I'm going to have to clean that off. But a, a pair of scissors. And I, since I cut a lot of paper, I like to get paper, uh, scissors that, are, that don't hurt my hand. And so this one is Fiskars, and it's di titanium nonstick. So I have several pairs. I have this pair in here. I also have this older pair in here that I can use. This is by Exacto, but I like the way this one feels better, so I use this one more. But I have a, another pair because I misplace things all the time. They get buried under stuff. I have another, a different pair in in my living room uh, with a in a container that I keep in there with supplies when I when I'm watching TV and cutting things out. I also want to have a small pair of precision precision scissors for cutting out, for doing fussy cutting. This one is my favorite. It's by EK Tools. And I just love the way this one works. I love this. I have two pairs of those. So those are my basic paper cutting scissors. I use fabric a lot, so I have my basic fabric scissors. They are also by Fiskars. So these are my fabric scissors and my thread snippers. Other cutters that I use, I use a paper trimmer. Um, it doesn't matter which one, I just grab whichever one is closest. These are both by Fiskars. They have a different type of blade. I have two because in my old craft room I had two tables to work at, so I kept one at each table so that I wasn't at one table and had to go grab my cutter and then I go back to the other table and my cutter is not there. It was just easy to have two. So that's why I have two. Um, but this one is the round blade and you just push that and slide it up and down. Of course this opens out. And this one is the regular little blade in there. 
And these are both the ones that you slide. I don't have a guillotine cutter. Some people like the guillotine cutters, but I like these. And I have to say that, well, let's let's finish up the tools. A couple more basic tools would be a ruler. I like a metal ruler. Uh, you can use your X-Acto blade along here. I do use an X-Acto blade sometimes. My friend Nancy prefers that over scissors, and she uses hers all the time. Um, but I don't use mine that often, so it's not included in my favorites. But you can use an X-Acto knife along the edge of a metal ruler. And I'm going to include this with my basics because this is a clear ruler with the zero in the middle. So it's a center ruler. So you can center things. You can put this in the center and then... Uh, I use this mostly for when I'm making my template for punching holes. I put this in the center of my spine template and that way I can mark out uh, where to where to put my holes. And I use it for other things too, to try to center a piece of scrapbook paper and I want this part in the center. You know, I, this comes in handy all the time, so I'm, I consider this one of my basic tools. You might think it's a fancy tool, but I consider it a basic. I use it a lot. And another basic tool is a hole punch. This is a very standard office supply hole punch. It's not a fancy crafty one, but I use this a lot. And I do have um, fancier hole punches, which we can talk about in another video. This is my basic one. I still use it. Along the lines of basics, we are going to talk about the pages for a journal and the covers for a journal, but these are things that belong in the journal. Th those things I'm going to talk about in another video, my pages and stuff. But these are basics for including in a journal, I think. Tags. I love tags, and for me, a tag is a basic supply. You do not have to have a purchased shipping tag. I have them in various sizes. I have some white ones and manila ones. Um, but you can make them out of cardstock. You can make them out of file folders and you can make them out of all kinds of things um, cereal boxes things like that but to me a tag is a basic and then you do all kinds of things to decorate and embellish the tag to match the journal that you are creating along with that i consider a baker's twine or some kind of twine to be a basic element to put through the hole here a string or twine. I always had a supply of baker's twine. And now I use a variety of things through the hole, but I still go back to my baker's twine many times. And I think uh, the last basic tool that I will be talking about are, or basic supply, are index cards. We like tags in our journals and we like journal cards. So you can take an index card Oh, there is one other supply I have here to talk about because it's a corner punch. For me, this is a basic. It's not something you have to have, but it's a basic tool for me. I use it constantly. So you can take your index card and round the corners and then do all kinds of decorating. Stamp on it, glue things to it, ink on it. Excuse me. <coughs> Paint it. Um, stencil on it. It's the the treatment you can do to the index card are endless. You can cut it to a different size and round all the corners. You can fold it and make a little booklet out of it. So this is a very basic supply and you can dress it all up. You can make it so that it still looks like an index card. Sometimes I've just taken one and put a stamp on it and maybe a little bit of trim on it somewhere. And you can still tell it's an index card, but you can put it in your journal and journal on it. Or you can totally disguise it so that you don't know. Nobody would know that it was an index card. 
So as I said, I will, I think uh, the papers that you use and the covers that you use would be considered a basic, but there are so many different things um, that can be used as papers and covers. So I will be covering them in another video. And fabrics also are, for me, fabric is a basic, but there's so many different types of fabrics and so many uses for the fabrics that they will be covered in a different video. So just looking at all of these supplies, all of these basic supplies, what does that do for you? Does this make you want to pick something up and start using it and start making something? I hope this was helpful to you. It does make me want to start crafting, looking at all of these things. So I hope this was helpful. I hope that you learned something new or just saw things that you use. Yeah, I use that too. Or uh, just found it entertaining. And I will be back soon with another video talking about my favorite supplies. I think some of the categories I will cover will be, of course, uh, what I use for covers, what I use for papers, the fabrics and what I use them for, and embellishments. There's so many categories. Um, I just, I don't know how I'm going to contain it. <laughs> I think I just want to show you all of my supplies. Um, tools, like my more non-basic tools, I will show you them. I will show you um, like uh, journal cards besides index cards, what I use for journal cards and journal spots and things like that. So this isn't really going to be um, like uh, my favorite supplies video where you take your somebody lists their top 10 supplies because I couldn't do that. I just couldn't narrow it down. So we're just going to go for it and we're going to talk about all the stuff I like to use. We'll talk about stamping supplies too because my inks are basics, but I didn't talk about them at all because they go with my stamps. Um, so that's going to be a whole new category. So we have a lot to talk about and I hope that you will look forward to this series. Thanks for sticking with me through this introduction to the basics, which maybe was a little boring, not exciting, but uh, I appreciate it, and I will see you the next time. Have a creative day today. Bye-bye.